Hello, everyone. Welcome to this special program, a Gallagher Blue Dorn season fall preview. I'm Roy Justice, and I'll be your host. I woke up this morning, and words started to flow into my mind about what the show is going to be. And these were the words, you can quote me. There's no business. <laughs> like snow, like snow business, uh, snow, uh, sh see? <laughs> One There's no business like show. one of the hazards. Depends on the wind yeah, yeah, well, it was a bad dream, actually, I woke up from. Um, this little corner of the world, however, when we turn the spotlight on show business, there's one location that goes beyond all others in this part of our world, and that's called the Gallagher Blue Dorn Performance Arts Center, and we have the people who turn the spotlight on the season, and that's what we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about, actually, the fall season, and a little bit in a later show, you'll hear a little bit more about the full season. So, shut up, Roy, with the introduction, get on with the show. And here we have, now appearing, direct from the campus of the University of Northern Iowa, Steen Kerrigan. Uh, Steve is the uh, Associate Dean of Special Programs, Executive Director, if you will, of the Gallagher Blue Dorn, and his partner in show business here locally is Blake Argensinger, who's the Marketing Manager. Gentlemen, welcome. Well, thanks for having us. Thanks. For uh, the spotlight will go on in this particular segment of the program uh, on calling attention particularly to the fall lineup. There is a lot to get to. Yeah, there's a lot. And we do a lot. Uh, we do a very broad spectrum of shows. Uh, what we, when we set up a season, what we're trying to do is serve everybody. So uh, you might hear about shows today that aren't to your taste, but you're probably going to hear about some that are exactly to your taste, and that's our goal. Okay, so again, we're talking about the fall kickoff, if you will, and as some of you are maybe seeing this, the fall may have already kicked off. <laughs> so pay attention to the calendar, and then we'll have information as well as to how you can inquire about tickets. Um, let's, start, let's start near the beginning. Where do you want to start? What show do we look at first? Well, let's, let's sort of start it off with a rock and roll start. Uh, okay. We have REO Speedwagon coming at the very front end of our season. And, of course, these guys have been making rock music for 30, 40 years. <laughs> yes. Um, they performed twice in the Cedar Valley in the 70s when they were just starting out and first being invented. And uh, they really have, they have some signature tunes. Uh, you know, REO Speedwagon is one of those groups that has a sound, uh, particularly a vocal sound. It's very different than other rock groups. Um, but if you think back to it, for a lot of us, uh, REO is part of the soundtrack of our lives. REO Speedwagon, I was going to go ahead and break out in song, but I'll just let that, <laughs> wait, wait, wait till they show up. Again, the date on that is September 14th. That's a seven o'clock show. Um, by the way, uh, regarding ticket sales and, and how to inquire about tickets and so forth, there's probably an app for that, is there not? There's all kinds <laughs> of stuff. Uh, we, we try to make it really easy to buy tickets at the Gallagher, so you can come to the Performing Arts Center and uh, go right to the ticket window, uh, about 9 o'clock to 4 o'clock, any day this summer. Uh, you can come in and get an order, or you can go to gbpac.com, and okay. there you can look at all the shows. You can also buy tickets online, and the nice thing about that is you can do that anytime you want. That's at your leisure. Excellent. Or you can call in at 273-7469. We'll probably repeat that a few times. As I suspect we, we might. We, we might. Okay. <laughs> so Speedwagon has uh, sped their way out of town. What's next? Well, I think the, the next show is Academy of St. Martin in the Fields. Uh -huh. And uh, uh, Blake, you do, were saying just this morning that uh, this is a show you were really looking forward to. Absolutely. I'm, uh, I played in the orchestra growing up through, through high school. Uh, and so I, you know, I have an affinity to stringed instruments, but you know, wasn't terribly familiar with the Academy of St. Martin's in the Fields. But this is the chamber ensemble. Uh, and what makes this really unique is that most chamber ensembles are a, kind of a mixture of people from different orchestras pulled in. The Academy of St. Martin in the Fields, this is the, the chamber ensemble from the, the proper orchestra and, and the section leaders of all of that. So these, this group, right. they've played together for a long time, so you have a, a different dynamic that takes place on stage than you might normally get with the chamber mm -hmm. groups. Uh, and they're, they're one of the best in the world, so it's, I'm really excited for it. I think any time you get the chance, to, uh, even if you're if you're not a huge classical music fan, um, seeing people who are the best in the world at what they do, I mean, you just can't pass it up. You'll find things to appreciate about classical. Uh, it, me personally, the first time I saw this ensemble, uh, I appreciated classical music in a whole new way because they really are just so good. They're so much. It's so much thicker. Mm -hmm. It's so much better. Uh, they they are just master musicians playing together as a family.
family. It's really quite remarkable. It's great to sit there and appreciate talent. Oh, uh, they just do things you don't think human beings can do. Right. They're that good. Yeah, excellent. <laughs> okay, time to put a smile on our face then. And uh, this, this lady's been doing that for many, many years. Lily Tomlin, uh, since Laffin in the, in the late True. 60s, uh, yes. has been doing remarkable characters, wonderful, wonderful, wonderful comedian, uh, uh, a very observational humor, also a career that just keeps going. She's won Tony Awards for live performance, she's done multiple televisions, she's had variety shows, and then uh, just recently, uh, over the last three years, she's had a show on Netflix called Grace and Frankie, mm -hmm. which is hilarious, where mm -hmm. she's with Jane Fonda playing two sort of... Uh, uh, ladder in life ladies uh, mm -hmm. trying to figure it out and just hilarious she has a wonderful wonderful sense of humor she's an observational comic and luckily we have a world that's got full of it's full of things to laugh at these days mm -hmm. uh, just as they always are and laughs at herself too but uh, uh, just she's come once before and uh, we had to have her back she's just a great funny lady Excellent. That's uh, Lily Tomlin uh, the first week in uh, October um, and now and talk about something a little different that's where we're going to turn to martial arts? Oh. Absolutely. So this At Gallagher group, Blue Dorn? <laughs> <laughs> and it's not just martial arts, and it's the national acrobats of, of China, the People's oh, okay. Republic of China. And this is the longest, or probably one of the longest running acrobatic groups in the world. They've been performing for over 50 years. Uh, with this group, and, and Steve does this great rendition of, of what well, happens with this. In fact, uh, uh, some of these performers have been doing these tricks not necessarily as part of the circus, but as part of their lifestyle mm -hmm. for, ge for generations mm -hmm. and generations. Uh, they used to perform in the courts of Chinese emperors, so that's how old some of these tricks are. And they do a really neat thing because these families have been doing the same work for their whole lives. And so when a child is three years old, they start learning the family tricks. And whether that's somersaults or, or a balancing acts or contortion, literally for their whole first half of their lives, they're performing every single day. And that makes them physically more capable um, than most American uh, acrobats are. If you think about American acrobats, you might start getting into tricks and things mm -hmm. when you're sort of college age. These guys have been doing it for almost 20 years before they hit that college age. And that those years of practice and physical conditioning just make them capable of things, again, capable of things that most people just, you don't even think it's possible for them to do it. Excellent. Okay, again, that's about the middle of October. Staying in October with the next group, um, a bridge over many, many <laughs> musical waters in this particular case. Well, this is, well, I have to tell you, this is one of my favorite shows. When, when I was just a wee little thing, when I was a, a freshman in college, uh, I almost by chance ended up being able to go to see Simon and Garfunkel perform one of their last live performances in Central Park. Wow. And uh, so ever since then, I've just been sort of a devotee. And of course, they don't sing together anymore. Uh, they have big, vibrant social uh, mm -hmm. single careers. Uh, so you don't get that sound anymore. But I'll tell you, there's some unique harmonies and unique melodies. And uh, again, uh, those songs just really speak to your heart. And so um, because I have this connection to it, I've always frankly resisted having a cover band or having other people sing that song because, right. boy, if you don't hit it dead on, right. it's just yes. not going to be the same. True. Well, I have to tell you, uh, and you'll hear it uh, in some of the video, boy, these guys are dead on for those harmonies. And, and they don't... This isn't a show where people sort of do a play about being Simon Garfunkel. This is where they take you through the music, the different eras of their music, and take you through the songs. Maybe there's a little background now and then, but what you really get to see is two great musicians develop who are in love with this music. And so, uh, again, when, the, when the, the, the percussion starts at the beginning of the song Cecilia, mm -hmm. um, boy, it sounds like you're right there again. And I love that feeling uh, sure. of being brought back uh, to our own history. Talk about something that keeps coming back because uh, this next show just keeps coming back. Uh, it, it, it was, and then it's uh, there again, and here it is again. Uh, the Gallagher Blue Dorn brings you some dirty dancing. Yeah. Well, Blake, you, you really like this song because you kind of grew up as a child watching <laughs> I, the movie, right? I did, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I think that's a, a familiar story for a lot of people talking about oh, gosh, that, yes. or, or the parents are listening on their cassette tape in the cars. Right. You know, they grew yes. up with these songs ingrained yep. in their minds. Yes. Uh, and this, you know, I've had a lot of questions like, well, does it, how can you really do the movie justice on stage? And uh, they, they absolutely nail it. I mean, the music's phenomenal. The dancing's phenomenal. It's high production value. There's a great storyline that's running through it that, that is, of course, familiar to Dirty Dancing. Um, so it, it's a really fun time. 
Yeah, I think uh, with this show, uh, w w people say, well, how can you do a movie on stage? And, I, and then I always ask them, what was your favorite part of the movie? And invariably, it's the dancing and the relationship. And mm -hmm. uh, those come through just vibrant and alive. And in fact, I would argue better for being live. That's that kind of dancing. And then we switch to another form of dancing and something that's uh, pretty familiar to uh, to people everywhere. And if you get a chance to see it, you just have to really, that was the very first ballet performance I witnessed many, many years ago. Okay. And uh, it, it just, it set me up like, oh, couldn't believe I was seeing it. It's so, it's beautiful. The sets are great. The dancing's terrific. The music is familiar. Yeah. And we're talking about? The Nutcracker. Thank you. <laughs> uh, which is a Christmas tradition for families all over America, all over the world, really. And uh, for many, many people, they have the same story you did, uh, where they got introduced to ballet through this beautiful, beautiful music. You know, it's uh, Tchaikovsky's uh, beautiful score, plays in every mall, in every store at Christmas time. Yes. I mean, it's just ingrained in our culture. And we have a really neat production because we work with a professional company, and then uh, we cast the children's roles locally. Uh -huh. So uh, by basically working with literally dozens of dance schools, we have about 110 uh, kids from Northeast Iowa that perform in our Nutcracker right alongside those professional performers. And uh, uh, we've been doing this for several years, sort of every other year. And I, one of the fun things that's starting to happen now is some of those kid performers, our local kids, are starting to be placed in professional companies. And when you ask them when they started, they say, oh, when I danced with the Minnesota Ballet uh, at, the, at the Gallagher Blue Door. And so I just love this notion that this isn't just a dance recital by any means. This is a sure. launching point for oh, some yeah. of our really talented kids. Yeah, beautiful music, beautiful dancers. And again, note the date, as I mentioned at the beginning of the program, um, this particular segment of the program of what's going on at Gallagher Blue Door is uh, kind of, we're kind of billboarding, if you will, as the fall lineup. There'll be a show later that will address the rest of the season because, as always, the Gallagher Blue Drum, when they do it, there's not enough <laughs> year to contain what they do. So that we will be slipping ahead into 2018 as well. Um, harmony. There's a lot of harmony in the way you put the shows together for the season and as this particular show we're about ready to unveil comes together. I can't do the harmony, but they sure can. Uh, you know, I, there's something about a cappella music, and I don't know if it's the choral tradition of Les Hale or uh, the Wartburg Singers or the Glee Club at UNI, right. but we just ingrained in us on yes. some level is this vocal performance, particularly of Christmas music. And so there's this group, uh, Straight No Chaser. This is actually their second visit. Uh, they sold out the first time, but this is the first time they'll be doing the Christmas show. So it's wonderful, wonderful music. It's a cappella, sweet as you can imagine. Uh, the group came out of the University of Indiana's music program, another great music program for vocal music. And uh, uh, it's just going to be, I think, one of the most heartwarming performances of the year. They're great. Uh, they love to interact with the audience. They have a great sense of humor. But more than that, they have these perfect moments of harmony. These perfect moments where, you know, classic Christmas tunes, and I like the classic Christmas tunes. Uh, boy, they just come alive for you on stage. And, uh, you know, it's almost like they're singing right into your heart. It's just beautiful. Uh, uh, sticking with the Christmas theme, if you will, we go a little uh, Celtic next. Indeed, Natalie McMaster and Donna Leahy, a Celtic family Christmas. Uh, and so it's not just, you know, the, probably the two best Celtic fiddlers in the world, but it's also the next generation, their kids, that come and perform with them. Um, and so you'll see them uh, tap dancing and, and playing the fiddles, and it's, it's a full-on family affair. You know, the, one of the early visits we had with Natalie McMaster, one of the people in this duo, uh, she came and she was eight months pregnant. And... Uh, uh, it was a really exciting show, and I think people in the audience were actually thinking something might happen right on stage. Um, but it was, it was really kind of heartwarming because, of course, uh, some of that very child she was uh, uh, carrying at that point mm -hmm. is part of a, a, a very musical family, and she'll be here performing. Uh, so it's kind of a, a full circle for the uh, McMaster family. That's the, uh, actually, that will be, unless there are some additions, and occasionally that happens where you uh, come upon a program that might be available, but wasn't available at the time the, the brochures were printed up and the bookings were done. Yeah, Blake, uh, how do people get informed about those add-on shows? Because we do three or four or even five or six a year. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, our email list is always a great way to to be the first in the know. That's a, a great channel t that we push information out. Okay. We also have our social media channels on Facebook and Twitter that we, we post a lot of information. Uh, and of course, our website is another uh, fantastic resource that, that's always up to date and has all of the information, all of the videos, 
um, and usually some uh, additional fun points that you can find out about the show. The add-ons can be a little tricky because uh, we book them late. It's usually an opportunity that we can't get uh, for the season, and they actually tend to be the shows that sell the best. And so getting early notification mm. sometimes can make the difference between getting a great seat or, or maybe sitting in the back. So okay. uh, it's always good to keep your eyes on it. We're going to be uh, kind of slipping into uh, uh, 2018 before we wrap up this particular uh, program, but one question always comes to my mind is, are all of these shows booked separately, or do you go through an agency that helps you tie them all together? Because sometimes you can catch them between Minneapolis and St. Louis, and they just happen to be passing through. And sometimes with add-ons, that's what we do. But really, we book the whole season ourselves. We book them uh, with dozens and dozens of agents. Uh, we work with, uh, and we meet with regularly, uh, maybe a hundred agents, and mm -hmm. we start with a, a very long list of artists that we're considering, and then uh, due to reasons for date or price or, or timing, uh, we sort of put together uh, a little bit of a quilt, I guess, okay. of a season um, that we, again, we try to have something for everybody is our, is our goal. Uh, we want to make sure everybody in the Cedar Valley feels welcome and that we brought a show for them. Okay. Now, as you are, again, at home are watching this particular program, we may well be into the fall season. Uh, there's another program that will be coming up later that will take a look at what's coming ahead in 2018. Um, but before we get much further, this beer is for who? Uh, beers to you and gourmet too is the full Excuse name. Excuse me. Okay. Uh, so yeah, it's kind of a mouthful. <laughs> uh, but this is an event we started 10 years ago. And what it does is it uh, sort of does... Um, you know, uh, at the time we started it, craft beer was first sort of coming into the world and microbreweries were opening up and, and of course they've opened up all over the Cedar Valley since. And what we really wanted to do is provide somebody sort of a gourmet beer experience. And so uh, working, uh, literally bringing hundreds of different beers um, to this event, but also working with all the best area restaurants. We have some 30 odd restaurants that come and they make uh, uh, sort of bite-sized meals that either use beer in the preparation or are designed to be paired with a certain uh, kind of beer and so it's a great way to on a Sunday afternoon to sort of try the best restaurants in town and maybe sample a whole bunch of different beers and tastes and flavors it's just a great it's sort of a vacation for your mouth and a great Christmas present because of the timing he reminded me <laughs> Stephen Blake or um, I, I guess I don't want to wrap up this segment of our program without again repeating the contact information because if people weren't with us at the beginning uh, they need to be reminded well, the easiest way is to uh, go online, dbpac.com. Uh, you have direct links to our ticketing system. You can get more background information on the shows or have your questions answered. And so that's always uh, available to you at any time. Um, if you want to call in on the phone, 273-7469, you can have one of our helpers uh, talk you through or answer any questions you have or help you make your purchase. Or uh, some people still do it. They come uh, and we have on sales uh, mm -hmm. throughout the year and things, but they come and they buy their tickets at the windows and they have somebody actually show them the seats that they're going to be buying. So you're welcome to do any of those things. And it was mentioned earlier about uh, the email list. How do they get on that email list? Right. You can subscribe through our website at gbpac.com. In the upper right, there's a subscribe button, and you can find that. And I would also say join our, uh, give us a like on Facebook or follow us on Twitter because we post a lot of behind the scenes, you know, backstage, you know, additional stories that really makes it a richer experience coming to these shows. Oh, and I, we should probably mention, too, so sometimes we use that email and, uh, and, and social media to give specials. So you might be able to even get some discounts on tickets or other things that we offer. Right. Well, this is just the beginning uh, as the season is uh, maybe underway as you're watching <laughs> this particular program. Uh, we're going to come back uh, a little bit later, and that will be the uh, spring look at what's going on at the Gallagher Blue Dorn. Uh, Stephen Blake, thank you very much for joining us today. Thanks for having us. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for being with us as well. I'm Roy Justice, and this has been another season preview, if you will, of our great Gallagher Blue Door and Performing Arts Center on the University of Northern Iowa campus. Thanks for being with us.